we have two nodes. One node just has a pin data, which is this video URL right here. And then we have a code node. And what we want is really simple, just to extract the video ID as well as this time frame right here. This is kind of simple to code. We could just use regex, for example, but but honestly, why do it ourselves if we could use Claude to do that? So I'll just get the input, send it over to Claude. Well, this was funny. I was just about to use Claude to create the code, but it's down for whatever reason. So let's just use Grok instead. I can copy this input, place it down here. This is the NAN input. Create a code node that extracts the video ID as well as the time frame and outputs it as a object. So it would generate everything for us. We'd get this code, send it back to the code node, test the step, and then we would have the video ID as well as the timestamp. For this example, it's really simple. You won't be testing it back and forth with the AI assistant. But for whoever uses NAN regularly, understands that sometimes you will be applying these changes back and forth and it, and it can get kind of annoying. So what I propose is for us to create a similar thing as cursor. It won't be exactly like cursor, at least not the first version, but this would work through a Chrome extension. That's the first way I thought of it. I would send over everything that's here. So I would first inspect this element, understand how I can reach for this JavaScript field, as well as the input field from the past node and potentially the output node, because then the AI would have the full context of what's happening and what is the current output for the given code. I'd imagine that the final results should be something really similar to cursor in the sense where it's using an AI agent to loop and then find a solution for whatever I want inside of my code. But this first version will just contain something that gets whatever I have inside of my JavaScript field, or even if I don't have anything, it, it takes the context just very similar to how I did it right here, and then creates that code and pastes that code inside of this field. That's all I want for now. So let's get started with cursor. I've just created a folder called NAN cursor. I'll type in CMD code space dot that'll open up cursor. Now is where the magic starts. Well, I didn't pay cursor this month because I want to make a video comparing cursor with windsurf. So let's go with windsurf for now. Okay, I think it's all set. Let's go back to NAN and inspect all the elements to find out where each and everything is. So the extension can scrape that. So I think the JavaScript code is inside of this div. Let's copy this element and send it over to Notepad. So I just wrote down, this is where the JavaScript code is found. Now let's find the input part. I'm not entirely sure, but I think this one is for the input field. Let's copy that element, send it over to Notepad and describe. This is the element from the input field. Now let's also get the output field. Yeah, and I just noticed this is really similar to the input field, so it won't work because it's basically the same element, so it won't know how to differentiate between both of them. And what I found here to maybe differentiate is this class right here, which seems to be a dynamic class, so I don't really know how we're going to aim at this every single time because every time NAN builds a new version, this dynamic class will change. Let's just leave it up to the LLM to discover like which attribute here can be used again and again, like is re repeatable, maybe basing off the style, maybe basing off this ID right here, data test ID output panel. That's that should be a, a nice one. Let's copy this element and paste it as the output. Yeah, this one is pretty massive. Let's also correct the input field, which is this element right here. Let's copy the element, paste it down. Now we have a pretty large context. Not sure about this, but let's follow along. Okay, so the prompt is kind of messy, but create a complete Chrome extension. Its main feature is allowing the user to send a message to an LLM at which we'll have the context input field JavaScript code and the output field. Then the LLM answers back with the correct JavaScript code and inserts it inside of the JavaScript. I've gathered the relevant elements so you know how to scrape the data, make sure the extension slides from the right side of the screen instead of just hovering uh, on the page. And I just specified this because if you ever noticed, there are two behaviors to extensions. I believe that the similar web is exactly what I want. So it just slides from the, the right to the left. And there are other extensions, let's say, yeah, this pull bot that it just hovers like here in the page. And what I want is exactly how similar web works. The system prompt should specify that the LLM should only answer back with the code and no further messages. It should never place comments on the code. 
So again, ideally this should be an AI agent and it should use tools and functions to actually understand what it needs to place inside of this field and only place code inside of this field and even like respond back to the user in a chat saying what it did. Very similar to cursor, but let's go baby steps and try to just make it replace what whatever code we have here with the suggested code. Copy that, go over to Windsurf, paste it in and let's see how it handles this. It's a bummer that Windsurf is only using Claude 3.7 Sonet and not 4.0. So minus points for them because of this, since Cursor already has the 4.0 since like the first day of launch. I don't want to have to keep clicking on the accept button here. So I'll just toggle this on. What is turbo? Always auto execute commands except those in deny list. In the auto, the model decides whether to auto execute. Well, let's just go with turbo. Accept and let's see it fly. Okay, it generated this. It's using GPT-4 Turbo. It took about, let's say, eight minutes to complete everything. I'm not sure what to expect, to be honest. Since it chose OpenAI, I just commented this line out and placed my entire token in here. I know this is totally not the right approach, but since I just want to test this specific feature, I'm fine with this as based on some previous extension creation, I've noticed that Handling the API key can sometimes be an issue. I don't want that to happen. So let's just keep it here statically for now. And also let's use the 4.1 mini model. Now let me head over to my extensions page. Just hit the load unpacked button, select folder, uh, fill to load extension. Let's see, it's because it doesn't have an icon. Probably inside of the manifest code, it specifies an icon, but then we don't have it there. So let's just comment this out. Can't really comment it out. So let's just delete that. Remove these ones as well. And I think we're good to go. Hit retry. Seems to have loaded well. Let's go over to NAN, click on the extensions tab and select NAN code assistant. It dropped down exactly what I didn't want to happen. So just if I type something like test and hit generate code, nothing happens. And I also don't get anything in the console log. So generate code, nothing there. Let's fix that. My prompt was I've placed the API key statically, leave it like that since we're just testing. Additionally, I've removed the icons from the manifest.json, not needed for now as well. Currently, I type in a message inside of the text area and hit generate code, but I get nothing back, nor in the extension, nor in the console log, nothing happens. It should open a side panel and not as a pop-up. Ideally, I should know what's going on and prompt exactly which fixes it should apply. But this is really just a test and I don't mind what it's going to do to get to the final result of just getting whatever I type in and fix my code inside of the code node. Okay, it seems to be done. Let's accept everything. Go back to the extension page. Refresh this. Select the extension. Hey, now there's this. Let me click that. Okay, this is kind of different. Let me hit test, generate code. Okay, now at least I get something in the console log. Probably it got an error because I didn't have the code node opened. If I hit this, yeah, I'm getting a fetch error. And then I noticed that the API endpoint is something project beetle.ai. So let me not select the thinking model because it takes a pretty huge amount of time. And my prompt is just please make the background.js use the correct OpenAI endpoint. Make it use the most updated versions. Don't change the model nor the API key. Okay, it seems that it was just the API endpoint that was outdated. Let's refresh this. And I'm still getting an error. Let's print this right here, send it over to Windsurf and just paste in the image as it should have all the context necessary to fix the problem. Okay, it seems like it worked. So I just typed in replace timestamp with time and then it replaced it in there. Let's see if it understands, I mean, uh, change everything and let's just make function that adds two numbers. The output should be the results of one plus one. <laughs> okay, this is, this is pretty cool. Let's see if it's correctly scraping and getting whatever is inside of the input field. So just export exactly what is inside the input field. Hit generate code, return items. Yeah, that's not what I want. Uh, let's see. 
let's hit generate code again and see what it gets us. So unable to extract specific output data. Yeah, so it's having some trouble scraping from the page exactly the content from the input, as well as what I imagine to be also the output. I've tried to recreate the code exactly like I did back in Rock, and I noticed that it wasn't able to do that because it keeps using the context that it doesn't have. So let's go over to the background.js and comment out this exact code. With that done, let me generate the code and let's see what we get. Okay, it created this, let's test the step, and we got exactly what we needed. And it's a much shorter code than the one that Grok gave us. Yeah, that was interesting. This is the type of project that I would build on my own just to help myself, but I believe it provides a lot of value for other people that doesn't know exactly how to code. And they are always in the back and forth with the AI assistant back in the NAN code node. So it should be something that helps out a lot of people. And if you want to see this being built in a format of video like this one, please let me know down in the comments section or just leave a like and I'll know that it's useful. That is it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.